In the 1990s, luxury manufacturers were in the race for performance. BMW already had dibs on the letter M. Audi was slowly expanding their Ren Sport, RS, and S models. And Mercedes-Benz acquired the independent tuning house known as AMG. But it seems that everyone wanted to jump on the letter R before it was too late. Volkswagen would later use the R for their first Golf R32, but in 1995, Jaguar launched their first supercharged road-going high-performance sedan, the XJR. But they weren't the only ones hoping to use an R to distinguish their family-friendly sedans from their go-fast twins, because in 1995, Volvo also launched their first high-performance road car, the 1995 Volvo 850 T5R. This original R was based off the 850 Turbo, but added 2 PSI of turbo boost pressure, which added 18 horsepower for a total of 243 and a total of 250 pound-feet of torque. Volvo offered either a 4-speed automatic or a 5-speed manual from the factory. The 850 T5R also came with Pirelli P0 tires, and its legendary inline 5 engine was co-tuned in collaboration with Porsche. Porsche also had a go with the interior, sourcing a suede material called Amaretta for the outside sections of the seats, much like their 911 Turbo at the time. Now you could get any color for the interior that you wanted, as long as it was black, and it was finished with a burlet black walnut wood trim around the instrument panel, floor console, and the panel shifter around the gear selector. The T5R also came with a new front bumper, front lip spoiler, side skirts, and polished aluminum door sills. It also had five-spoke Titan alloy rims that came in a dark gray color. But going fast wasn't Volvo's only priority. The car still had to be impossibly safe as well. ABS, traction control, four airbags, child booster seat, Volvo guard alarm were all standard, as well as a sport suspension, cruise control, power windows and mirrors with electronic climate control, front and rear heated seats, a sunroof, power seats with three driver memory options, and front fog lights were also standard on this car. 5,500 T5R estates and sedans were produced for the single 1995 model year, which was almost double what Volvo had initially planned. Due to the success of the 850 T5R, Volvo started work on a successor, which ended up being the Volvo 850R, like this sedan that we have here finished in brilliant red. New alloy rims were offered, and the sedan had a newly redesigned rear spoiler. Inside, real Alcantara was used for the intersection of the seats, and a couple other interior colors were made available. Manual models came with a larger turbo, boosting power to 250 horsepower. The 850R also received a new manifold, new intercooler, and a more sophisticated fuel pressure sensor. Other improvements with the 850R included thinner anti-roll bars, stiffer damper settings, and a viscous coupling limited slip differential for manual models. The 850R was produced for the 1996 model year and 1997 like this one here. For 1998, Volvo essentially rebranded the 850 as the V70 for wagons and S70 for sedans, but it's largely seen as a facelift. The 1998 S and V70R received diamond stitching seating, a special front bumper, blue gauge cluster faces, 
two special paint colors, like this red, unique alloy rims, a CD changer in the trunk, and Volvo's new road and traffic information navigation system. This was the first time Volvo offered all-wheel drive as an option, along with an automatic or manual transmission. However, it's important to know that US spec cars were all automatic with all-wheel drive. For 1999, all cars globally were sold as the V70R all-wheel drive. However, the S70R was only made for the 1998 model year. In 2000, Volvo went with a new 2.4-liter inline-5 engine, which bumped power to 261 horses and 295 pound-feet of torque, and it came with a larger turbo and variable valve timing. A 5-speed adaptive automatic transmission was the only option. Rear brakes grew and became ventilated along with a dual exhaust setup. Keep in mind that this car was supposed to do 0 to 100 kilometers in 7.4 seconds, which was quite a bit slower than the 5.1 seconds out of the BMW E46 M3. Volvo introduced the second generation V70R as a 2003 model and the S60R replaced the S70 for 2004. It gained a new Halidex all-wheel drive system found on the e-wagon and it also saw significant engine upgrades to a 2.5 liter straight five producing 296 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. A six-speed manual was once again offered along with a five-speed automatic. This 2005 V70R all-wheel drive is the first year of the facelift, which added a sixth gear for the automatic transmission, Brembo brakes, standard 4C suspension, which we find on modern Volvos today, and HID headlights as standard. 3,407 V70Rs were produced for North America, and it also marked the end of Volvo's high-performance vehicles under their R branding. But the story doesn't end there. The next generation S and V60s received an R design package, which added cosmetic upgrades over the regular cars. While a five year hiatus after the final 2007 R feels like a long time, Volvo introduced the 2012 S and V60 T6 R design, which produced 325 horsepower and 358 pound feet of torque out of its three liter turbocharged inline six. But a new breed of high performance Volvo was just around the corner. Australia in 2013 received the S60 Polestar. It was a 346 horsepower, 375 torque inline six turbo engine. It used a new Borg Warner turbo, new intercooler, upgraded suspension and shocks, a six speed Polestar transmission, and a Polestar tuned Halidix four wheel drive system. In 2014, this S60 Polestar made it to Canada with an even bigger Borg Warner turbo and launch control. And in 2015, Volvo acquires Polestar, using it for future high-performance hybrid models, while keeping the R design as an appearance trim on almost every model they sell. This US-assembled 2019 Volvo S60 T6 R design bridges the gap between what Volvo R's used to be and what the Polestar future holds. 
at 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque from its supercharged and turbocharged inline-four engine, all-wheel drive, and eight-speed automatic transmission, this third-generation S60 is faster than the original 850T5R. But it doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. Any of these older models have plenty to offer and provide owners with a uniquely Swedish performance experience over the typical German AMG, BMW, or Audi. The next generation Volvo High Performance Polestar mixes what makes the R design so great with the forward thinking technology of hybrid power. The 2020 Volvo S60 T8 Polestar Engineered is a twin engined E all wheel drive sedan, producing 405 horsepower and 494 pound feet of torque. So while the Volvo Rs were never quite as fast as the BMW M3 or Mercedes AMG C63, this family of Swedish performance has plenty to offer buyers. Whether you want something classic like the 850R or something modern like this S60 T6, Volvo's high performance cars are the beginning of an exciting future for the automaker, bringing a unique approach to luxury, safety, and sportiness. I want to extend a huge thanks to the Club Volvo Quebec for making this episode possible. We gathered members from all over the province to Oka, Quebec to film this episode on the history of the Volvo R and Polestar models. Without their support, we wouldn't have been able to make this happen. You can join their Facebook group with over 3,500 members if you're a Volvo enthusiast and live here in La Belle Province.